Hey physics kids, Campbell here. In today's video we're going to talk about how to calculate electric potential and energy and some of the things that we can do with it in terms of finding charge speeds. Now I know I showed you this equation before, the electric potential energy um, equation, but I thought it was important that you see where it comes from. Remember work equals a change in electric potential energy and work is force times distance. So when we throw in the electric force equation, Coulomb's law, kqq over r squared, in for force, and we multiply by a distance, I lose that r. Now, that gives us kqq over r, single r. But really, when we talk about energy, potential energy, we're really talking about a change in potential energy. Just like with gravitational potential energy, when we talk about how much gravitational potential energy there is, we're talking about it with, in reference to some point, and we choose some arbitrary zero. With gravitational potential energy, it's usually the lowest point in our problem, or the ground. But for electric potential energy, what we do is we choose infinity. So that reduces our electric potential energy equation to kqq over r because we're referencing it from infinity. Now, infinity sounds like super far away, right? Like millions and millions of miles away. But if we're talking about small little charges, I mean like a proton or an electron, we're only we're talking about a distance where that force, that electric force that it exerts, or the field it exerts is really negligible. So it could even be just like a meter away. So infinity doesn't have to be super far away, just with regard to the problem. Now, one thing that's very, very important for you to remember is that energy, whether we did it in um, AP Physics 1 or whether we do it now, energy is a scalar. That means we don't have to do X and Y components. Yay! No trigonometry. We just add stuff together. And so in electric potential energy, it's very important that you use the sign of the charge, right? If you're adding stuff together and you have a negative charge, then you're really subtracting. So don't forget to use the sign of the charge. If I have multiple charges, whether I'm calculating electric potential energy for multiple charges or electric potential as in this problem, you're just doing an algebraic sum of all of the potentials or the potential energies. Now, for example, in this one, if I wanted to know what the electric potential at point A is, I just add up all of the electric potentials from each charge from its with its distance from A. So here it would be my equation and notice that Q1 and Q3 are both negative. So notice that both of those have the negative sign. So I just take Coulomb's constant, nine times 10 to the ninth times the magnitude of the charge with its sign, divide by R, and then add it to all the rest. Potential and potential energy is positive or negative based off the sign of the charges. That's very important. Potential is a scalar, not a vector. Yay, we get to add and subtract. No sines or cosines. Let's do a problem. Let's stick some numbers here, because we like numbers, right? Calculate the electric potential at point A. So I want you to pause the video and see if you can get this right. Now, if you did this right, if you plug these in, make sure you use the sign of the charge. Remember, micro is times 10 to the negative 6, and you need to work in meters. So make sure you divide those numbers by 100, the 5, so 0 0.05. Don't square them. This is not force or electric field. This is energy, so it's just a single R. If you did it right, you should get 4.73 times 10 to the fifth volts. Remember that the unit of potential is the volt. Now... What if we take a proton and put it at infinity and bring it to point A? How much work is done by the electric field? Hmm. Well, work equals a change in potential energy. And potential energy is related to volts through Q. Remember, voltage was electric potential energy divided by Q. Ooh, so work is a change in potential energy, which by rearranged now, I've got Q times delta V. This equation, remember this equation, very, very handy. You'll use it a bunch. So I just take the voltage, since infinity is zero, and I multiply it by the charge on a proton, which is what? 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th. Now, I know we're doing final minus initial here, but 
this work is negative. Why? Why is it negative? Hmm. Well, remember that the, our voltage we calculated at point A is positive. I know it's hard to believe, right? Because we had two negative charges. But the voltage at A is a positive voltage. So does a positive charge want to go to A, right? A proton's a positive charge. Does it want to go to A? Absolutely not. So we're going to have to force it, which means the electric field is doing negative work. The electric field is pointing away. So it doesn't want to come. So that's why it's negative. I know we didn't get that from the calculation. So when you do your calculations, look at what's happening. Is the charge going where it wants to go? If it is, then the work will be by the electric field is positive. If it's going in a direction it doesn't want to go, because it doesn't want to go to an area of positive voltage, then that electric field has to do negative work. All right, I have a question for you. In the region between the two charges, so region two, the electric potential is what? Always positive, positive at some points, negative at others, or always negative? Well, if you said positive at some points and negative at others, you're right, because remember you're doing a sum, a scalar sum, an algebraic sum of KQ over R. So when you're over here, right, you're gonna have a positive voltage, and when you're over here, oops, you're gonna have a negative voltage. All in all about us. How about the midpoint between these two charges of equal magnitude? Is the electric potential positive, negative, or zero? Well, because these are equal charges, hopefully you said zero. The midpoint between two equal but opposite charges is zero for potential. Is it zero for electric field? <laughs> no, because remember, that's a vector. Those will add together. All right, let's talk about electric potential and electric field again. So if remember we talked about charge conductors, we said that the excess surf charge resides on the surface, right? It pushes as far away as possible and that's as far as it can go. And we said that the electric field inside the, a conductor, a charge conductor is zero. And in fact, if we made a graph, the graph would look like this. So inside our conductor here, as we go from here to here, the electric field is zero. When we get to the surface, we have a maximum of KQ over R squared. And then as we go down, and that R squared would be this R. And as we get farther away, we decrease by an inverse square. What about electric potential though? Remember electric potential is a scalar. So is it zero in the middle? I mean the electric field is zero. Well, if you said no, you're correct. It's scalar, so it adds up. So all of the potential inside that charge will add together. And in fact, it's constant. Right? As you move away from one charge, you're getting closer to another. So the potential inside the sphere is constant, and it's the same as the potential at the surface. So everywhere here inside my conductor, the magnitude of the electric potential is KQ over R, R being the radius of the sphere. And then as we get outside, we have an inverse, and just a regular inverse, which is why it's not as steep as that one, um, KQ over R as we move away from that conductor. So let's get back to charges moving in electric fields. So I put a charge in an electric field, and if I let it go, it's going to move in the direction it wants to go. It's going to feel that electric force, and it's, begin it's going to begin to accelerate. So that means it's gaining velocity, which means it must be gaining kinetic energy. So if I just release a charge in an electric field, it will gain kinetic energy but at the expense of potential energy, electric potential energy. Because remember, the law of conservation of energy, which applies to the whole entire universe, says that the total energy of a system is conserved. It just converts from one form to another. So I start with electric potential energy and I gain kinetic energy. Law of conservation of energy. But the total energy stays the same. Now we can use this idea to do calculations for things like speed. So let's take a look. So if we look at, say, some parallel plates here, all right, I have my uh, low area of low potential over here because that's my 
um, low my negative plate and I have my area of high potential over here because that's my positive plate. So if I put a positive charge here close to the positive plate and I let go, what's going to happen? Well, it's going to move towards the negative plate, right? It feels a force of attraction to the negative plate and a force of repulsion from the positive plate. So we say that a positive charge accelerates from a region of high potential to a region of low potential. So it loses potential as it accelerates. If we stuck a negative charge in here, well, we wouldn't want to put it there, right? It wouldn't move very far. But if I stuck a negative charge in over here, what would happen? Well, it would accelerate that right way in the direction opposite of the electric field, but in the direction of its electric force. So a negative charge will accelerate from a region of low potential to a region of high potential. Now, if we want to calculate energy and work for plates, right? If we just, our change in potential, so the potential difference between the plates is the change in potential energy per Q, which gives us this equation, which I told you is important and not to forget it just a couple minutes ago. Don't forget that equation. So work is equal to Q delta V. Now work is force times distance. So we could also plug in this equation. If you remember before we talked about the electric force is equal to the charge times the electric field. So we could plug this equation in for force because remember we can't, with plates, we can't use that kqq over r squared thing. No, no k's for plates. So if we plug that in here, we'll get another equation, q times e times delta x for work. So now I have two equations for work one in terms of potential and one in terms of electric field. And that can be helpful when I'm doing some calculations. So for example, I have an electron which acquires a certain amount of kinetic energy when it's accelerated by an electric field. What is the potential difference and which plate has higher potential? Pause the video and see if you can figure out how to solve this problem. Well, work equals a change in kinetic energy, right? All right, so we know our kinetic energy and I wanna find potential difference, which means I need to use the work is Q times, work is Q times delta V equation. All right, so work is equal to kinetic energy. So that's 7.45 times 10 to the negative 17th. I divide that by the charge on my electron which is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th. You don't need to use the negative. Here, um, we're just looking at the potential difference and, um, and you get 466 volts. Now, which plate is the higher potential? Well, two ways to look at this. Where does an, a, positive, a negative charge want to accelerate? It wants to accelerate towards the positive. So I would say B. Also remember electric field lines point from positive to negative, which is another determination that this is positive and this is negative. And remember, higher potential means positive. So that would be the right plate. All right, if you remember a while ago in one of our videos, we did a problem where I wanted to know what the speed of this charge was when it hit the lower plate. Remember I said it was a positron because it had a positive charge but the mass of an electron. Well, I don't have to use forces and acceleration and kinematics. I can use the conservation of energy. So I can say kinetic energy is equal to work. Now in this case, I don't have any information about voltage, although I could easily calculate it because remember that voltage is equal to the electric field times uh, the distance. So we could calculate voltage. But we also have that work is equal to QEX, which we just had on our couple slides ago. So we can just set these equal to each other and solve for velocity. So velocity is two times the charge times the electric field times the distance it moves divided by the mass. Oh, and the square root. So you plug in your numbers and you get 2.65 times 10 to the six meters per second. What do you know? If you go back in your notes to when we did this problem with forces and fields, you will see that that is the exact number we got before. All right, one more thing. What if I wanted to find the potential through which the charge moved? Well, we could say work is Q delta V, or we could say that uh, the electric field times the distance is the voltage. There's that equation. 
And so we just multiply 2000 by 0 0.01 and we get 20 volts.